This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. Snake bites are certainly one of the most feared things on the planet. But are they as bad as people think? Today, we're gonna find out. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Fucking A. That was close. <laughs> How'd you get that? Satan, my Burmese python, later in the show. But I want to start out a little bit smaller and talk about snake bites here. So I'm going to start with these Colombian rainbow boas. And these guys are just babies. And as babies, as you can see, they love to strike. I mean, they are just all about striking. And that's a defensive strike. So if you ever thought, what does it feel like to get bitten by a snake? Would you put your hand in this box right now? Look at these things striking. Just going crazy right now. Okay guys, this is what it feels like to get bitten by a snake. Ow, little bastard, look at that, ow. So what you gotta remember is that snakes have hundreds of little pin teeth and they're really uber sharp. And some of them are, re ow, got me right in the pinky, ow, you little sucker. And they're recurved in a lot of ways and that's why they hang on. And again, the reason for this is, ow, is because they want to hang on to their prey. Again, when the mouse is running by, they've got to grab it. That mouse can't get away, so those recurve teeth kind of hang on to them. So regardless, that's basically it. You can see, I'm going to take one little guy out here and just give you guys an idea of what it's like. Again, getting bit by snakes is not really as bad as people most of the time think. When you see something like this, and it's a lot of times the fear of the actual strike, right there you go oh my god that thing struck and you're scared then when it actually bites you don't get me wrong it doesn't feel get good to get bit by a snake but it's not nearly as bad as you think it is but this is what they call a defensive strike now i want to really always say that snakes aren't necessarily aggressive they're very defensive animals so they're just trying to say stay away from me right now and you can see the closer i get with my face the more it's going to want to try to keep me away Whew. It's coming pretty close, guys. But there's really two kinds of snake bites. There's that defensive bite, just like this little guy here, and then there's a food bite. Now, the defensive bite is a quick strike. It's a bite it and a let go. A food bite is I'm hanging on because I want to eat this. So we've seen what these little rainbow boas can do. Let's move on to a food bite. All right, so let's move on to a food bite. Hopefully we'll have a snake that cooperates. Now, you might notice that I'm wearing this kind of goofy GoPro thing, because I want to get a close-up of the snake if it does bite and hold on. Uh, by the way, if you want to know how I came up with this idea or any of my craziness, you can go ahead and check out the vlog right here. Uh, there's a link to it. Also in the description, you'll see it, and in the cards. Uh, go ahead and check out the daily vlog, Monday through Friday. So uh, anyways, let's get back to snakes. Now again, we showed you a defensive bite, uh, which, you know, hey, I've got some pinpricks in my hands and stuff like that, but they're pretty small. They don't hurt that bad. This is a slightly bigger snake, and these are usually really aggressive when it comes to feeding. Again, not aggressive towards people, but when it comes to food. So let's see what happens here. Oh, oh God, I always hate that feeling of, ow, ow, oh, gosh. Did you see that sucker just, he just came out, and he did not mess around. Now, see, what you can tell right now is that, it's a food aggression bite. You can see it's, it's sunk its teeth in, it's coiled around. To, in its mind right now, it's thinking, oh gosh, that really does hurt. Right now it's thinking, I'm gonna eat this hand. Not that it's trying to eat me as a person, but the fact that it's trying to eat my hand right now. And uh, I tell you what, they have all those teeth. And the thing about king snakes in particular is they have pretty powerful jaws. So this guy is just clamping down as hard as he can. He does not want that prey item to go away. And then of course it throws those coils around to kind of constrict the prey. And that's how snakes like this kill their prey. 
oh, they're actually uh, gonna constrict it. And every time the prey takes a breath, it just tightens it up a little bit more and a little bit more, and eventually the animal succumbs to the constriction. So right now it's thinking, hey, this hand has to be a mouse, and I've gotta kill this hand so that I can eventually eat it. In the meantime, it is pretty painful. I'll take an, a, a defensive bite any day over a food bite. But again, guys, I'm showing you this because it's not the end of the world. You know, I'm not dying here. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit painful, and I certainly would love to get this thing off my hand if I could. You can see, look at how tight it's coiled around my hand right now. It's literally, my fingers are starting to turn red and almost purple from the constriction. It's amazing how much muscle snakes have. And it's just trying to figure out what's going on here. Why can I not get this thing to stop moving? Uh, and eventually, it would figure out that, hey, you know what, this isn't a mouse. I can't eat it, and it will let go but I have a trick. Not that I think you guys are ever gonna get bitten, constricted by a snake, but if you're a snake keeper, maybe it's gonna happen. And there is a trick to get this kind of painful bite off. So if you wanna get this, sh this, this off, take a look at this. Right here is the trick, guys. This is actually mouthwash in a spray bottle. And what it is is that there's a little bit of alcohol in mouthwash and snakes will usually immediately let, let go if you just get a little bit of alcohol into their mouth. Again, doesn't hurt the snake at all. Remember, we use this mouth spray. Look at it. It's not hurting me at all. Hey, and I got a pretty good minty fresh <laughs> breath right now. So, so what I'm gonna do is just take and do a little squirt on this right now. And hopefully, ah, uh, in a minute, it's not working, guys. Usually it works like a charm, but this guy does not want to let go. See if I can get it in there. Oh my gosh. Ninety-nine percent of the time, when you squirt that, it's going to work. This time it didn't happen, so I've got to go. Wait, look at, see, it's starting to loosen up. That alcohol is starting to get in there, but I might have to do this the old-fashioned way, which is just uncoil it. Ah. And as you uncoil, it starts to bite down even more and clamp down even more because it doesn't want to let go. Ah, and it starts twist out. It starts twisting his teeth into you. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, and it's in a really tender spot on my finger too. It's tender in my meat. So all I can do, guys, is try to keep the coil off somehow. So I'm gonna hold it like this and hope it doesn't coil. And then I'm gonna just try to grab its bottom jaw and work its way off. Oh man, this guy does not want to let go. Sometimes you actually have to push the animal onto your skin. <laughs> oh God. This is not fun, guys. Uh, now I just want it off. I'm at that stage where I'm just like, okay, I've had enough. Can you please let go? Uh, oh gosh. I just gotta try to pry it off. Oh, you can see those teeth are sunken pretty tight. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Oh, finally. I tell you what, guys, that was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. I thought for sure that I was gonna show you a little spray trick. It was gonna let go, and that was gonna be it. Now I wanna really, you can see, he's ready for round two. This guy is not messing around at all. Woo! Look at him, he is fired up. Oh, now he's biting himself, look at that. Tell you what, that snake is one hungry snake. And what the deal is, guys, is that we feed the colubrids twice a week in its feeding day today. And we've got some rodents thawing so they can certainly smell. But look at him, he's actually trying to eat his own body right now. Now that snake is something else. Again, it's not an aggressive animal, it just wants food. And if I'm around it, it's gonna want me for food. So we're gonna go ahead, gently put this guy away. And because that mouthwash thing didn't work out so well, I'm gonna go ahead and try another snake. Let's go to take two. We're gonna stick with Mexican black kings because they're really heavy feeders. Uh, really tame animals, but really heavy feeders. We're gonna see if this next one will latch on and hopefully this time when I use the mouthwash, I'll show you guys that it actually does work. We'll have to see what happens here. Let's see. All right, bud. Ow! Yeah, it got me there. Good. Okay. I don't know why I gave it my pinky. It's probably the worst finger to give because your pinky is so sensitive. But as you can see, it was really willing to bite. And it's doing the exact same thing that the other snake did. You know, it, it, it's chomped on me. It's laid its teeth in pretty tight. It's wrapped the coils, not quite as tight as the other one, 
So that's a good sign. Won't be quite as bad, but I can tell you what, I hope this one comes off because it's in a pretty precarious position right now. And if it starts twisting and turning and really pulling, it's going to hurt really bad, guys. So right now it's not too terribly bad. So back to the mouthwash. Come on, please work this time. Oh, it just tightened up. It actually went the other way. Okay, come on. Oh my gosh, I, I've used this mouthwash trick no doubt at least a hundred times and it almost always works. Today doesn't seem to be my lucky day. I don't want to make snake bites seem like they're really horrible because 90% of the time they aren't bad, but unfortunately I've gotten a little bit unlucky today and I've got two snakes that have really wanted to clamp down on me hard and not want to let go. I got the top jaw off, but the bottom jaw is still really sunk in. And it's usually when you get the top jaw off, the bottom jaw will come off because it starts to loosen up, but it doesn't want to let go. So I'm going to have to literally roll my finger out here. Oh, now it's got my thumb. Now oh, it's got my thumb. Great. Okay, got it. Woo! All right, guys. That was a tough one. That is not at all what I was expecting to happen. I really figured the demonstration that I was gonna give you guys was gonna be pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, it didn't work. All right, so now we've covered a defensive bite, which is basically the bite that's gonna latch out and just let go. We've seen two snakes now do food bites which are more of the grab on, wrap, coil, I'm not letting go because I'm going to eat your finger or whatever it case be. In both cases, my handy trick of mouthwash didn't work. So that goes to tell you when a snake is really hungry, maybe you just have to do the best you can do to not get bit. But some snakes are a little bit more apt to bite than other snakes. That doesn't mean that they're mean. But in particular, baby reticulated pythons or small reticulated pythons can be a little bit cantankerous. So let's go ahead and head down and see what a baby retic bite is like. So now that I've been a pin cushion, and you know, basically you had the babies that were really defensive, then you had the king snakes that are obviously just really hungry. They just always want to eat, especially this time of year. And now we're going to get into some animals that are just notoriously a little bit more cantankerous, okay? Now reticulated pythons are actually really great animals as they get older, but a lot of times pythons, when they're young, are a little bit aggressive. Now, again, I, I don't want to use the word aggressive, defensive. You've got to remember that these guys are little animals in a big world, but they still have that kind of big attitude that a reticulated python has. So uh, this happens to be a beautiful titanium reticulated python. But I tell you what, every time I touch the snake, it lights me up. Oh, you can see. And it's a rapid fire bite too. You can just see. It just doesn't want to have anything to do with people whatsoever. And again, this guy will probably really mellow out as it gets older, but as a baby, it's just, you know, oh gosh, sucker. And it's got a pretty big head for a little snake, and you can see how long of a strike range it has. So again, you don't want to get too close to your face or <laughs> that thing's going to take a pop at you. And again, reticulated pythons are notorious for being a little bit more of an attitude -y animal. <laughs> Is that a word, attitude -y? But having a little bit more of an attitude when they're young. But as they get older, they really mellow out, much like Burmese pythons and other things. <sighs> and they are smart animals. You could see that whole time, like even right now, it's actually sizing my face up, saying, how close do I have to get? Rather than striking and wasting energy, it's actually thinking, how close do I have to get before I can take that pop shot? You can see how it's kind of assing up, and it's kind of getting a little bit more distance so that when it does strike, it's gonna be close enough to hit me, probably right in the nose. And if I just got a little bit close, it would just go ahead and launch. But again, you could see. Retics are really smart. Again, not mean animals, but as babies, a little bit defensive, saying, hey, leave me alone. I got that big snake attitude and that little body, and I'm going to go ahead and have that Napoleonic syndrome for sure. So anyways, titanium reticulated python, beautiful snake. Eventually, I'm going to show you guys in a year or two, this snake is going to be dog tame. But right now, I'm going to make sure to keep my distance because she wants to take a shot at me. Look at this. Whew, come on. All right, I'm going to put you back. There you go. Get back in there. 
<laughs> they're really fun and I'll be honest with you sometimes snakes with an attitude can be kind of fun uh, but again I do want to say one thing you know you guys might think oh my god those poor snakes biting him it's gonna hurt him every now and then people will say when you get bit maybe the snake loses a tooth and it can die I'm gonna be honest with you guys snakes bite rodents they bite pieces of rock in the wild. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I wouldn't want you to get bit for fun, but I'm trying to educate you guys here so that the people that don't know what it's like to get bit by a snake sees a guy like me getting bit and I'm still alive. And the snakes aren't gonna be harmed. I can tell you what, I'm taking the brunt of the attitude here, you know? I don't think we're gonna have to worry about the snake getting hurt or anything like that. Is there a chance you could lose a tooth or two in my skin? Certainly, but they have hundreds of teeth. They lose those teeth all the time. And unless it gets impacted and infected, you don't have to worry about it. But again, I'm doing this mainly because I wanna show you guys that getting bit by snakes, although it's not the most pleasant thing, really isn't that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and look at a another snake that is known to be a little bit more touchy to handle. And anyone that watches the show probably has a pretty good understanding of what snake I'm talking about when I say a snake that is really just always willing and able to bite. And that, of course, is the Amazon tree boa. These guys are always fired up and always happy to take a pot shot at me. Whoa, come on, not over there. Go, come on. This happens to be a Oh, gosh, I tell you, every time you almost get bit by a snake, no matter how many times you get bit, you still have that kind of tingling feeling like, holy cow, and uh, <laughs> ow, and there it goes. Now, Amazon tree boas are always just pretty apt to, ow, to want to bite, and they do have some pretty big teeth, so when they do hit you, it is a little bit more tough than say a snake this size. If you really look at this thing's head, it's really not that big of a head, but when you get bit by them, those big teeth, and that's, the reason for that is, is these guys will spend a lot of time, especially when they're older, are gonna spend a lot of time up in the canopy, up in the trees, and of course, their prey is gonna be birds. And when they, oh gosh, you guys got me right in the thumb. Uh, of course, when that bird or something like that is flying by, they get one shot at it. So those teeth have to be a little bit longer so that they can hold on to that bird. Oh gosh, right in the palm. And that way that teeth just sinks in past the feathers and they hold on to it. But as you can see, these guys are really defensive and they just want to be left alone. But they're really gorgeous animals. And even taking all the bites I have, you can see it's really not that big of a deal. But Amazon tree boas, they're born with an attitude, and that's a snake that doesn't tame out when it gets older, typically. Now, every now and then, you will get an Amazon tree boa that's relatively handleable, but most of them are not. So, unlike the reticulated python, these guys usually stay little jerks their whole life, but uh, I absolutely still love the attitude. As a matter of fact, me and one of my guys in the crew, Steven, were just talking how we kind of like the attitudes of snakes when they have a little bit more of that kind of, you know, I'm going to bite you attitude. I don't know. There's just something more interesting about him and to, to mess with him. But I'm going to go ahead and get this guy back and then we're going to revisit Satan and see where that takes us. So let me start by telling you a little bit about Satan. You guys know her a little bit, but I want to kind of fill her you in. You know, I hatched her about eight years ago and uh, just like that little retic, it was really mean. She was really, really mean, but many berms and many retics are as kids. And then as they get older, they mellow out. Well, she got to five, six foot, typically when stuff starts mellowing out and she was just as mean as ever, or I hate to say mean, but she was certainly willing to bite, right? So at that point, I really couldn't sell her because I wanted to make sure she was being cared for and that someone wouldn't necessarily abuse her because of her attitude. And now here we are eight years later and she's basically stayed the same. Um, but I love her to death. But we have a pretty good understanding. So let's go ahead and see what happens when I open this cage. Uh, for starters, she's really cage defensive. And for a long time, we had to keep her in a much smaller cage because when you put her into a bigger cage like these eight by fours, she would just bash her head against the wall. Now she's really relaxed in here, but you can see we cover the front with paper so she can't see any movement out here. Because as soon as she sees movement, she wants to strike. And I don't want her to bash her face up any more than it already has been over the years. So regardless, as soon as I can get in with her, she, wa she, you know, she wants to come after me every time. There's no doubt about it. And you definitely have to be careful with her. But as long as you understand her, it's really not that bad. A lot of times what will happen is I can just take a snake hook and just kind of keep her going. And depending on how she's acting, she's either going to strike once or twice, or in this case, maybe not at all. I don't know yet. So I'm going to just kind of 
play with her a little bit, see where she's going. She's definitely fired up right now. And I'm in kind of a bad spot here, guys, because in order for me to see her, I have to kind of look over the top. And by looking over the top, I'm putting my face right in view of her potentially biting me. So usually I want to try to get her from the side a little bit, but I've got to move her around to where I can understand where she's at. And again, I get asked all the time about Satan, have I ever been bit by her? And the truth is, yeah, probably about eight or 10 times. And I have a pretty gnarly scar on my leg from her as well. But uh, usually I win the battle. You know, you figure we handle her at least once a week to clean her, if not more often. So you figure for eight years been handling her and she's only got me one time, or well, 10 times that is. Uh, but it doesn't happen that often. I certainly win the battle more than anything. But she's acting a little bit weird in the sense that I can't just go in and get her because she's probably gonna strike. Just gotta keep on playing that cat and mouse game, right? I'm gonna play cat and mouse with her, see where she's going. She's gonna push her at limits and see where I'm going, and eventually we'll get to a point where we both understand. You know, see, so basically what's happening right now, guys, is that she's going this way, and then when I put the hook on her to get her to go away where I can maybe pick her up, she's then turning back around on me when I touch her, which means she still wants to strike at me. And you just have to kind of play the game a little bit and see what happens, and see kind of how I'm just kind of playing with her, picking her head up, kind of moving her around. I never want to move at too quick of a pace with her. Now I got her face the other way and whoa. Yeah, she almost got me there. It was, it was, uh, that was kind of pushing the limits a little bit, you know. I, uh, I reached in to get her and she turned around and snapped at me immediately. And uh, if I didn't have quick, slow, or if I had slow response, I would have definitely gotten hit on that one. But that's okay. We just go back to the start again. You know, we start messing with her. I know her actions so well because I've learned so much about her that I can tell she's really perturbed right now. And if I try to pick her up, she's gonna bite me. So I have to just keep on working her, keep on working her until I get into a position where she hopefully has given up the thought of biting me and allows me to pick her up. Now, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes it takes five minutes. Sometimes it takes an hour of messing with her if you don't get it right. But one thing you don't wanna do is ever try to pick her up when her face is pointing your way because that way she's gonna strike at you. If her face is pointing that way and I go to pick her up, the worst that's gonna happen, she's gonna swing back around giving me enough time to hopefully get away. So let's see what we got here. Come on, girl. Come on. I see you. Whoop. Nope, 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 nope. Come on, girl. All right. She is definitely in a weird mood today. Usually she's a little bit easier to play with, but as you can see, once I've got her figured out, she's all right. I can get her out like this, but again, you gotta always be careful because she can turn on you in a minute. So, so guys, I'm sure you're sitting there, some of you are watching going, I hope that big snake bites him. Today, I won the battle of Satan. She's an amazing girl. I hope you guys have gotten a little bit of better understanding about what it's like to be bitten by a snake. And hey, the real purpose for the show, sure, is to entertain you guys and to, to show some snake bites, but the truth is, is if I can make just a few people that watch the show that might have been afraid of snakes or, or feared snakes and see that, hey, you know what, getting bit isn't as bad as you thought it was, and maybe you lose a little of that fear, that's the real purpose of the show. So hey guys, for me and my girl Satan, hope you guys have loved the show, and until next week, I'll definitely be catching you on Snake Bites. You can follow me on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat at SnakeBitesTV, or on Instagram at SnakeBites.TV. Until next week, this has been a great time, and you've been watching Snake Bites. Do me a favor, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button for not only Snake Bites, but other awesome animal videos. And if you want to watch more Snake Bites videos, go ahead and click the link right here and just watch away. Can I ever do something funny? <laughs>